Senate has ditched its strict dress code for one that is more relaxed and informal. Florida Governor and 2024 GOP presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis blasted this decision, as did many others, blaming Pennsylvania's John Fetterman's penchant for sweatshirts and shorts. Let's listen. That's his thing. So he would campaign in that, which is your prerogative, right? I mean, if that's what you want to do. But to show up in the United States Senate with that and not have the decency to put on proper attire, I think it's disrespectful to the body. And I think the fact that the Senate changed the rules to accommodate that, um, you know, I think looks, speaks very poorly uh, to how they consider that. Look, we need this country, we need to be lifting up our standards in this country, not dumbing down our standards in this country. Fetterman hit back, reposting DeSantis's comment on X, captioning, quote, I dress like he campaigns. <laughs> Meanwhile, GOP Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene took to X, formerly known as Twitter, tearing into the Pennsylvania first term senator, writing, quote, the Senate no longer enforcing a dress code for senators to appease Fetterman is disgraceful. Dress code is one of society's standards that set etiquette, etiquette sorry, in respect for our institutions. Stop lowering the bar. Congresswoman AOC came to Fetterman's defense, responding directly to Marjorie Taylor Greene's posting on X. Aren't you the one who did revenge porn in a hearing? Rawr, the claws are out in Congress. This, um, is, <laughs> this is Tansu 2.0. I don't care. And, on, and no one cares. And if you say you care, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> what look I'm, I'm within reason you know it's a, a no shirt no shoes no service mm -hmm. type deal you know if he's naked or like in his underwear or anyone else on the on in the halls of congress that should not be allowed but the kind of wearing a suit or not, no one really cares. Does anyone really care? Correct me if I'm wrong. Other than Sagar and Jetty, the former <laughs> host of this show, who's like a sartorial expert and thinks everyone should dress more fancy, no one else cares. Okay, so I'm of two minds about this. On one hand, I was raised to dress to show respect for certain kinds of areas, including even airplane flights. Like, I'm, you're never gonna find me in sweatpants and flip-flops. I put uh, comfortable slacks or jeans and a blazer on to take a flight. And I have been stopped in airports by flight attendants who say, thank you so much for dressing up for me. Mm -hmm. Now, and I can appreciate how if you're at work every day trying to provide a service and people are out here with like, you know, toothpaste on their mouths and looking like they just rolled out of bed, that that would be unpleasant, but I also do feel like, you know, I don't know that there's, there's a big gap between like dressing respectfully and like looking pleasant and put together and literally having a formal right, suit and a on. strict, honestly, strict dress code rules tend to annoy me uh -huh. because they tend to be very old fashioned and out of date. Like also it's, like, it's so hot in DC. If hot. you go to a place where, where like, oh, this actually, this recently happened to me. I went to an event mm -hmm. and, and it was right around the corner from here and I was wearing a jacket. I'd taken off my tie because it's like, it was 100 degrees mm -hmm. a month ago. And they said, oh no, he, the, you have to have a jacket and a tie. I was dressed in a suit, mm -hmm. just not wearing a tie. They said, you have to have a jacket and a tie. Mm -hmm. So luckily I was right around the corner so I just came back here and picked up the tie I'd been wearing. So it's not really a problem, but it's annoying. Like I looked nice. Yeah, I look no, fine. I, I, I think. agree. There's probably some middle ground. I think that everyone would acknowledge that. Or like for I, women, it's like a shoulder when it is here, here, here. Yeah. These are different things. It seems dumb. Sure. And dress code politics in schools has been so kind of biased against girls and then kind of limiting the way that they can dress just because of the nature of what kind of body parts we police versus what body parts we don't police. And so there's all kinds of layers to how well, I could say this Girls and boys could go... shouldn't attend school together, okay. so let's <laughs> okay. just okay. get okay. That's a different that. segment. <laughs> but that, there's a lot of ways this could go wrong. But I do think that if there was an a, a standard that was established that, you know, acknowledged that maybe people shouldn't be topless or maybe people should be, be like smart casual. Yeah, like those activists at the, at the Biden White House event, right, weren't those LGBT activists, remember the woman who took her top off? Yes. Yeah. That, no, that you can't do. That obviously is disrespectful and crosses <laughs> the line. But that's the thing. It's about your ability to make your case. You know, yeah. even if technically there's no rule against being topless at the White House, obviously nobody wanted to know what that activist had to say because they seemed so out of touch and yeah. sort of unhinged in their behavior. And I think that Congress members are largely going to continue to conform to traditional standards because they want a respect right. from an audience that's come to expect that. Of them, Co like what are we even? What are people mad about? Congress routinely does so many things that are bad. The sure. members of Congress routinely vote for legislation that they have not read. Sure, this is going to happen again. Whenever, if if they resolve the government shutdown debate, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to at the last minute ram through some gigantic Frankenstein piece mm -hmm. of legislation that is going to have all these, uh, all this 
sub spending in districts that they haven't. They're going to. I mean, Nancy Pelosi has said this before, and mm-hmm. Republicans are just as bad. You know, we have to pass the bill to find out what's in it. They routinely do that. Like, I think that's very bad behavior for our elected representatives. Sure. Voting for things they haven't read. Obviously, there's, there's to, to, big... to take a nonpartisan one that is bad. Look, there's a big question mark of is this that important given all the other bad things yeah. that Congress is doing? Should Ron DeSantis be taking time out on the campaign uh, stump to bring this yeah. issue up? I would argue absolutely not. But I do think there's some interesting class questions here. I remember when AOC first got into Congress, she talked about the expense of having to go out and buy this whole new wardrobe as someone who hadn't yet gotten their first paycheck. Also, the cost of getting an apartment in D.C. in addition to your apartment in your district, those kind of costs are prohibitive to those few Congress members that aren't already millionaires. I saw someone else on Twitter making the case that, while this is kind of annoying to talk about, I'm actually in favor of dress codes because at some point, some millionaire is going to dress in like fishing gear or or hunting gear or some down home like working class cosplay to come off as more approachable and that's going to annoy the heck out of me because it's going to be misrepresenting their truth. required to wear the dress of your class status. <laughs> I mean there's a, there's an argument God. to be made, no? That's funny. That's kind of funny. Who was making that argument? I don't know. Somebody on Twitter. I'm sure it was somebody who's going to be upset that I'm not citing them specifically. But I think it was it was a labor lefty kind of okay. a person. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. At the end of the day, I think that mu- much of the pushback you're getting from the right is simply because it's about Fetterman, mm-hmm. or at least perceived to be about Fetterman. I don't know if they have explicitly said it's to accommodate, accommodate Fetterman. It, but it's, it's Fetterman, I, yeah. I, I suspect that if this were... Um, a conservative uh, senator or representative, then they would be saying it's classist of Democrats to want to be able to, to be wanting to enforce the dress code. Here go the elites once again. As as it is, we have uh, Harvard Yale graduate uh, Ron DeSantis standing up for uh, elite upper upper class dress. Code. I saw uh, Nate Silver, the journalist pollster guy, yeah. uh, was was uh, who's you know something of an independent. He uh, he he brought the Fetterman and the Lauren Boebert story from yesterday that mm-hmm. we discussed. You should check out that video if mm-hmm. you want our commentary on what went down <laughs> at a performance of Beatles. Really, Bruce. truly what went down there. Oh, God. <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. Nate Silver <laughs> yes. put these two things together and said, stop. <laughs> what are you looking <laughs> at me for? <laughs> said uh, said um, uh, that he thinks, you know, he's he wants to be part of the party that doesn't care about either of these things at all. Mm-hmm. This is really stupid. And, and and then people were getting upset at him for for saying these are not remotely similar. Like liberals were getting mad at him for saying these are not. Re- you know, what Lauren Boebert did was a horrible transgression of norms, and accommodating Fetterman is good. Like geez, these are both stupid they things. They are both stupid. Are not the, the, something to care about. I think the Boebert issue is more about the hypocrisy of it than the act of it. I mean, it sure. is inappropriate yeah. and, and like borderline against the law in terms of like decency laws, whether or not you think those are good things. Um, but I would. I also would not care if she were a yeah. normal person, and also if she weren't hooking up with a guy that hosted drag shows at his bar at the same time. Well, she's she he's say. not getting another date. She said he's not getting another date. I did see that because he's a Democrat. Right, she didn't and know she that. she said she didn't know that. So here's another level of the story: Lauren Boebert uh, doing heavy petting in public with a guy she knew so little about. <laughs> And she didn't even know his political affiliation or that he he owned a dra- a bar that regularly does uh, drag shows. But look, I don't want to be the Puritan police here. She's only thirty six year old. Let the let the let the thirty six year old grandma live her best life. John Fetterman too, I guess. John Fetterman too. We're equal opportunity uh, folks here. All right, that's our silliness done with for the day. More rising right after this.